Hello and welcome to Policy Bazaar. I'm Arjun Bhagat. Now, Indians are terribly uninsured when it comes to motor insurance. Uh, we sell about 2 million four wheelers and uh, 10 million two wheelers in the country. So that makes it approximately 14 million. But the total number of insurance policies sold every year is just about 16 million. So clearly, a majority of people owning vehicles are not renewing their vehicle insurance, uh, making them a complete uh, uh, a hazard on the road. Um, while we have already discussed the concepts of car insurance, uh, on um, the show today, we'll also talk about renewals of car insurance and ways to save on your car insurance premiums. Uh, and of course, you know, the pitfalls of driving your car without an insurance. To discuss this, we have with us Yashish Daya, CEO of uh, Policy Bazaar and uh, its uh, founder. Yashish, clear difference between the number of policies for new cars which are being sold because that's pretty much compulsory. Yes. Um, and, and the number of people renewing it, it's just a difference of 4 million. So the majority of Indians are not renewing their cars in the second year. And, uh, and that is also a legal requirement which uh, they are missing out on. So uh, I, think, I think what the data uh, <laughs> tells you is 2 million cars and 10 million uh, two-wheelers. That's shocking and, in a way. It's and shocking. you know, the 12 million, uh, or 16 million renewals, while the total number of, uh, you know, a typical vehicle stays in action for about five to seven years. So you should expect to have maybe a 50 million uh, kind of policy instead of the 16 million that you have. But I think this uh, data gives a different picture primarily because the number of two wheelers is so large. <coughs> so I'm sure most people would insure their car comprehensively for the first few years of uh, its existence. And after that, people start forgetting or, you know, people don't do it. Now it's a legal requirement to have both your car and your motorcycle or your two wheeler insured as you drive on the, uh, on the, on the streets. Primarily because it's not for your safety, it's for the other person's safety whom you may end up hurting. It's a third party cover. Third party cover is uh, the cost that any vehicle can cause to any third party on the street. And that is a legal requirement to be able to drive on the street pretty much all over the world, including India. So, you know, if you get caught without it, uh, you know, yeah, you may be able to kind of pay your way through, but that's that's not the right mechanism and that, that may not work every time. So uh, there's, there's an issue there. Now, as far as renewals is concerned, it's pretty straightforward to uh, renew your car. Uh, also, from a renewal push perspective, the distributors don't have too much of an incentive because it's a, the product pays you about 10%, which, you know, on a 6,000 rupee motor insurance policy was 600 rupees. Uh, people's earning has gone up. So 600 rupees is not really enough for somebody to come to your house and, you know, pick up the check and do, do all the follow-up work. On a motorcycle policy, it becomes 50, 60 rupees. So the so agent there is, really- What you're saying is there is absolutely no incentive. There, on is, there is less of an incentive to uh, promote these products. So the customer almost has to reach out to, uh, to take this product. And that is where the flaw lies. The customer has to remember. So a few ways to take care of this is obviously make sure that you are aware of when your renewal is due. Uh, have some reminders set. It's, it's quite easily done these days. Most people are using calendars, etc. Uh, there, there can be services uh, which, which provide such renewal reminders. Make sure you pay in advance because if you don't pay in advance, there are two things that can happen. Number one, you may not get a policy again because there will be an inspection before you get a policy. Even if there's a scratch in your car, the surveyor can say, I have a problem, I will not insure this car. And that can be trouble for you because you're not allowed to drive without the insurance. Secondly, if you have any no claims bonus protection, which can give you discounts up to 50%, which means you could be paying half the so price. So that you end up losing. You end up losing it if your policy lapses. So please make sure you take your policy before the due date. After the due date, the inspection and the no claim bonus loss will apply. And that's, it's very important that uh, you know one, one takes care of that. Otherwise, it's a straight uh, financial loss to the individual. And please don't drive without an insurance policy. So what are the pitfalls of uh, not having an insurance, both for the person who doesn't have it, and suppose you do unfortunately meet with an accident. Uh, the, uh, the other party who, uh, you know, who's going to be impacted by it, who probably has an insurance policy. You are legally not allowed to be on the road without an insurance policy. So if you are, it's not about your financial cost. That third party insurance is for the other individual. The individual who's driving without an insurance policy is committing a crime. And the crime is very simple. He is going and causing damage. He has the potential of causing damage to somebody without the means to pay for it. Because he's not demonstrated the means to pay for it. The insurance policy is the means to pay for the damage he may cause to somebody. And it's uh, totally unacceptable to drive without that, of course. Uh, with with weak law enforcement, 
you may believe that you can get past it but if you do get caught it's a imprisonable offense you can get into prison for 6 months for this offense and you know we live in a country where the accident rate is amongst the highest in the world and you know literally lakhs of people get killed or get maimed and people should be thinking about over i i find it very strange when somebody buys a car insurance policy uh very reluctantly takes a th- you know a comprehensive plan there's a 7 lakh rupee idv being covered and then they take a 50000 rupee uh accident cover for the for the person next to them do they realize what the personal accident cover is for it's for death and disability it's not for medical it's not if you get hurt and you need some bandage it's not for that but it's for death and disability in case of an accident is 50000 rupee going to cover that why even take it if you are taking 50000 rupee cover you know what they should be insisting on is much higher personal accident covers in that uh, situation so so people just to wake up to what they are buying you know when they are buying a 50000 rupee cover for uh, for their co-passenger it might even be insulting that you know in ca- in case that co-passenger gets people it happens all the time on the street people die people get disabled they will get the 50000 rupees which is a ridiculously small amount of money and that doesn't protect the individual you know causing the accident for whatever reason that accident may take place okay and what about so so we've pretty much established the importance of having insurance and you know not be lax about that uh, how do i go about renewing my insurance it has become very very convenient um, at this stage hasn't it well uh, the first thing is uh, as you move into uh, you know your your renewal time frame uh the, the company that whose insurance policy you have will make an attempt to try and reach out to you through some email through some telephonic uh, mechanism etc in case you want to look at the options in the market just go to any of the comparison sites they've got lots of options out there you can see what you want try to take not just an insurance policy but a zero depreciation insurance policy because whenever you have an accident uh, and uh, you know your parts get damaged and suppose 1 lakh rupee worth of parts get damaged and you are <laughs> kind of 3 years into the policy and you have a 40% depreciation you will get only 60000 rupees minus a salvage amount so you might actually get 50000 rupees or so now if you want the full 1 lakh rupees or close to 1 lakh rupees then you need to go for a zero depreciation plan so ask for a zero depreciation plan take a plan which covers your no claim bonus in case you have a no claim bonus so look at the options out there get a bit educated about it and once you've decided which plan you want go ahead and purchase it as the time comes up next year look out again look at the options existing you will save a lot of money you, you, i i'm pretty sure most people who uh, look for options will save about 20 to 30% so if you've got a policy for 8000 rupees you could get for 6000 rupees save about 2000 rupees just by a simple comparison uh, that will help you you know a lot of people have this concern that you know i've been paying my um, insurance premiums on time but suddenly there's a hike yes and and you know what are some of the reasons uh, for that uh there are there are two kinds of reasons uh one is there is basic inflation there are uh, certain claims ratios which uh, imply that the claims are high and uh, you might suddenly be identified as somebody who's uh, you know in a sec- in a sector where your claims ratio is high or the inflation component is affecting the insurance company for example from 1st of april the third party insurance premium is likely to go up so that is a natural part that is happening however there is a more uh, sinister thing i have noticed in the insurance industry <laughs> which is that sometimes uh a customer is given a discount in the first year uh which is not carried over in the second year right. by the same insurance company because they believe that 80% of the time the customer is going to renew with them anyway so why not charge a slightly higher fee and i find that very strange because uh, it's almost a reverse so you're not uh, really in- incentivizing you're not incentivizing loyalty you're really, actually yeah. disincentivizing loyalty uh so in that situation i really encourage consumers to go out and look at the options existing for them because quite honestly if they looked for a uh policy where they were renewing from another company into this company they might find a lower price that is they're renewing from the same company to the same company so if you're if you're moving to company x and you're with company x you might be paying a higher price than if you came from company y to company x because companies are somehow somehow discounting first year prices so uh to that extent from a consumer standpoint it'll make sense that you do the comparison again and uh, and look for the best price and that will also encourage companies to stop this habit of uh, you know charging higher on the second year premium because they should ideally be giving the same price why why charge somebody higher just because he's been with you for a while but but what about issues like you know suppose i want to switch my insurer yeah. you know shortly before uh, it's lapsing the insurance policy is lapsing so um, are there any do's and don'ts in that because you don't want to lose the existing insurer see the good thing about the motor insurance policy is till it has lapsed 
if you are able to pay for a motor insurance policy, your motor policy will start before uh, the, the closure of the policy. The problem is if your policy has closed and it has lapsed, then you will have a problem. So don't let it lapse. Before the lapse happens, if you've got a new policy from the date of the old policy, starting off from the closure date of the old policy, that policy is incontinent. So unlike health insurance, where moving from one company to the other is, is a painful event, in uh, car insurance, it's a pretty straightforward event because every year you're starting a new policy, you're paying a fresh, and you can start with somebody else. They don't need to inspect the, com the uh, car. As long as uh, the, you, you are within, within the time, time limit. If right. you're within the time frame, there is no inspection, there is nothing. Seamlessly, you will get a new policy. End of story. However, uh, the, you, you would need to provide some proof of the fact that you've had a policy until that date. Uh, which is which is a normal ask. Um, Yashish, uh, as far as uh, you know, if suppose I go ahead and sell my car. So what happens to my insurance? Can I carry it on to another car? Um, yeah, sure. Do I get a refund back? What happens? So uh, suppose you are eight months into your policy or six months into your policy and you've sold your car to uh, somebody. At that point, you will inform the insurance company that your uh, policy needs to stop and uh, the new person needs to get their own car insurance policy. So they can continue with your policy for up to six months if you don't stop it and they can pay you a little amount or they need to stop and get their new policy. As the car transfers, they have to get a new policy. So uh, your policy, you can carry on to a new car. So if you buy a new car, suppose you have two years of no claims bonus, you can carry that two years of no claims bonus forward to your new car. The individual who's bought the car from you gets no benefit of your no claims bonus. If they need to start a car policy, they have to carry forward an existing no claims bonus from another car which they may have sold, or they start with zero no claims bonus. Now it's a strange thing in India, but the no claims bonus is actually attached to a single car. So if as a consumer, if as a driver, you've got uh, seven years of no claims bonus, that does not mean you have no claims bonus for all your cars. You have no claims bonus for one car. If you sell that car, you can take it forward. Otherwise, you always start from zero no claims bonus. And that's the principle, but it's fairly straightforward. Up to 360 days, you can carry that no claims bonus into another car. Right. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people don't really take advantage of that, which is another strange, uh, I, I guess it's about I think, I think people with high, people with significantly high no claims bonus would keep that in mind. Remember, you can have a 50% uh, no claims bonus on a Maruti 800 and be buying a, a Mercedes and getting the 50% no claim bonus benefit on the Mercedes from day one. So that's a huge yeah, advantage that huge you can advantage. get. Yeah. So people people should use that. And I think a lot of people, I know a lot of people who are, do use are it. Are doing that now. Yes, who do right. use it. Okay, so it's time for viewers questions. We've got Sanjay Ghosh from Kolkata. He says, I want to buy an insurance online uh, term insurance plan for approximately one crore. He wants a suggestion on a good company. And he is also talking about a permanent disability Riders. So some interesting question. He also talks about whether, um, you know, uh, medical requirements, what the medical requirements are as well. Yeah. So my advice to him would be to go for a standalone uh, personal accident uh, and critical illness rider uh, uh, policies along with the insurance policy. The reason for this is because uh, very few plans have got the disability rider attached with them. And what that means is options are fewer in terms of disability riders. So what one can take is a standalone policy for critical illness and disability. There are quite a few options and there are quite a few good options out there. And the standalone policy also implies that later on if they change their term plan from one to the other, they can, those two policies are independent. So they can change one and retain the other if should they should they wish to do so. In terms of options for them, there are, there are quite a few. So you know, you start off with uh, SBI Life, HDFC Life, ICICI Prudential, Reliance Life, uh, Tata AIA, uh, you've obviously got Aegon, Aviva, Bharti AXA, India First. You've got a, you know, the Kotak is there. You've got a bee's knees of, uh, you know, insurance industry is there in terms of online term plans. Uh, so clearly you've got lots of options. Just go out there, look for your particular um, age and for the duration up to about 65 years of age, what the time duration is, look at the various options look at the prices you can get for pure term cover, make sure you've dis disclosed everything appropriately. Uh, at a one crore level, you will most likely have medicals, go through them, that they, are, they are beneficial for you because at the times of, cla of claim settlement, the company would have these records and your family would have those records to prove that you had gone through this particular process. So, uh, you know, just go ahead with the, whatever you like. I would say go for something that is lower cost for you, uh, but uh, sh should you be more comfortable with a, with a particular brand, please go with that and uh, buy a standalone disability and critical illness rider it has its own advantages and you know you certainly need it
Right, uh, well, we've got Anand Sharma um, who's written to us. He says, I'm 33 years old. Uh, he's written from uh, Ranchi and he says uh, he makes 35,000 a year. He's uh, a month um, and uh, he's in the government sector. His goal is to get rupees 40 lakhs after 16 years for child education and 70 lakhs for his retirement. And he says, um, and you know, if you look at his investment portfolio, he's got a number of LIC policies. And then interestingly, he's got um, Aviva, which is a, a annual premium. He's got uh, Aviva Life Bonds. He's got ICICI Life. He's got a monthly SIP HDFC and as well as a monthly um, SIP of, um, of uh, Franklin India. And he says that it's very difficult uh, for him to actually, I guess, uh, understand the margins that he's going to end up getting or the, the premiums he's going to end up getting. And how should he really systematize his uh, portfolio? So see, when you're looking at a pension plan, you're looking at a 25, 35 year time frame. Uh, in that kind of a time frame, uh, very small investments can can make up very large amounts as long as they are done in the right instruments. Right. So most of the endowment products in the market will, you know, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a uh, small investment will struggle to get into the 70 lakh number. But if he goes with ULIP products, low cost ULIP products, very small investments will get him there. Uh, I, I haven't done the math very clearly but uh, something like uh, a 30,000 rupee uh, sort of uh, investment on a, no sorry, three lakh rupees a year will uh, in 10 years time uh, be about uh, 10 lakhs. So he should be able to get to about a 70 lakh figure in uh, or for a pension if he's investing about one lakh rupees a year. Very easily he should be able to get there. That, that should not be a concern for him. Uh, but he will struggle to do that with endowment products. For his child plan, given that the child plans are usually having a 10 year time frame, he can stick with endowment plans. But creating a 40 lakh uh, corpus through, for a, through a child plan will imply almost a 20 to 30 lakh rupee investment. So if he's looking at a 10 year period, there's almost a 2 lakh rupee investment per year. So, you know, there's no magic out there, it's your own savings. So whether you create it through FDs or whether you create it through child plans. But if he's buying a child plan, one very important thing to look at is waiver of premium. Because that's the biggest strength of a child plan versus an FD or uh, any other instrument. Because it has the waiver of premium. So in case an unfortunate event happens, there are no further premiums to be paid. And the benefit will still be provided to the child on so that So he basically, in a nutshell, really needs to relook at the way he's uh, being investing. There's so many different products. So maybe... Yeah, you maybe know the disaster situation. The, 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 the disaster in, in his situation that I can see is that... The fact that he's bought so many of these plans, that in which are is, which are sort uh, of going to lead nowhere, uh, but the worst part is getting out of them is not an option either. Because so what he could perhaps do, if I could advise him, would be convert all these plans to paid-up policies. So he pays no further premiums, but whatever he's paid for, he doesn't withdraw it today. He gets it whenever the policy is over. He gets only a proportion of it. So he's converted all his endowment plans to paid-up policies. Then he takes that amount that he's been investing on a uh, monthly basis and puts it into a high growth ULIP. Uh, maybe, you know, you've, right. got, you've got a few options out there. You've got Aviva, you've got HDFC, you've got something coming in from IPRU. Uh, invest it in one of those and, and keep it running for 20, 30 years. It'll give him a good return. Right, Yashish, that's all the time that we have on uh, this episode of uh, Policy Bazaar. But uh, write uh, to us, write on uh, ask at policybazaar.com, tweet us at twitter at policybazaar underscore in, and we'll see you next time with another episode of Policy Bazaar. Goodbye.